what was the most influential gaming system of all time? If you said Commodore 64, then you're retarded. Of course I'm talking about the Nintendo Entertainment System. Nothing today could exist without the NES bringing gaming back to the masses. But even the mighty NES had a shitload of craptastic games, and to make it even worse, they didn't even look pretty. So without further ado, this is CRX Forum with the top 10 worst NES cartridge art. Damn. Circus Caper. Am I the only one who sees some sort of French pedophile robber stealing a small child from either her mother or brother? Yeah, I don't know what the hell that is. Anyways, look at these animals. I'm sorry, but if evil clowns were not enough to keep a kid away from the circus, these evil looking animals definitely are. Talking about evil clowns, fuck! What were they thinking? Explore the big top. Play, dot dot dot, Circus Caper, the greatest game on earth. Yeah, I don't think so, you bag at eating child molesting, evil clown loving, leotard wearing, handlebar mustache rocking bastard. Number nine. Blaster Master. Now don't get me wrong, this game kicks ass, but what kid would know that from the cart or the box art? Imagine yourself as a kid in the 80s, and you walked into a store to get a game and you saw this on the shelf. You'd be asking yourself this What the hell is this? What is this blue rhombus looking thing, and why am I targeting it? So according to the artwork, I'm possibly fighting a blind monster in front of some sort of geometrical shape. He would have no idea what it was about. The game kicks ass, however, the art flows. Number eight. Win, lose, or draw. In the majority of cases, creating a game out of a TV game show doesn't really work out too well. This is no exception to that rule. The artwork on the front of this game is even worse than the game itself. Now, if someone showed you this image without explaining what it was beforehand, I'm pretty sure 90% of the people asked to describe it would say it's some sort of feminist awareness meeting. These people look so confused about what is going on. Yeah, that's a good idea. Show people confused with the real game, because people playing on the NES in a shittier version than real life won't be confused at all. Now, the fact that the board is empty isn't stupid enough. The body language and facial expression makes it seem like this lady is busier than a dyke in a hardware store trying to give hints to her teammates about what she is drawing. Well, Sally, what is it? Snow? Is it paper? Glass? Come on, Sally, what the fuck? Just another craptacular, fantastic waste of ink. Seven. A boy and his blob. Now, this game itself isn't too bad. Sure, it's not amazing, but it's not a bad game. But how would you know it's a decent game? Look at the art. David Crane's A Boy and His Blob. Trouble in Blobolonia? Okay, so what the fuck does that mean? There's no idea given to what this game is actually going to be about other than some kid and some sort of blob. This is the only thing to note about the cart art, and that's the absolute logo. Absolute SHIT! Hooray for dots, I guess. For all I know, just by looking at the cart art is that this game is a connect the dots game. Good work, Absolute and David Crane. You really burnt the candle at both ends coming up with this eye-pleasing wonder of ass. Bricks. Bandai Golf. Challenge Pebble Beach. I guess I shouldn't expect much from the people who brought us Power Rangers. The first thing I notice is the amazing facial expression on the man in the front. First off, he seems to have the worst tan of all time. White forehead that does a nice gradient to his rosy red cheeks. I guess pink was the flavor of the month when they designed this card. The logo has pink, the guy is wearing pink, hell, even the Nintendo seal is pink. I guess they were trying to show the more feminine side of golf. By far the worst part is his hands. Now I'm no doctor, but that shit just ain't right. All in all, this cover art looks horrible and it's almost like staring into one of those magic eye posters. You think the longer you stare at it, you're gonna be seeing something good. But just like the magic eye, you're always disappointed at the end. Five. Anticipation. Well, I'm not sure really what to say about the cover art on this cartridge that you cannot already see for yourself. The number one rule for designing anything is that you have to make it universal for the ages. I guess whoever thought it would be a good idea to get a bunch of white people to dress up in Bill Cosby sweaters all with a shit-eating, I'm taking it up the ass facial expression didn't take that into consideration. Look at this lady for example. Yeah, I'm really sure she's making that face over this craptastic excuse for a game. This is just too annoying to look at any longer. I don't care if it's Nintendo's first video board game. Charles in Charge hasn't been on in 20 years, and this game's art designer shouldn't be employed in this field for another 20. Number 4! Paperboy. This one is just lame. No creative thought went into this card at all. A kid on a bike throwing four newspapers at once? Wow! 
They could have done such a better job. Maybe the kid is being chased by a dog or avoiding cars. That would have made it better, but no. It's just blue with crappy paint fill-ins instead. Now it gets a bit creepy here. Look at this kid. He's the most evil looking kid in NES history. He looks like an evil dwarf out of the movie Leprechaun. The evil expression, the crooked eyes, pig nose, and nasty smirk all smell of something way more devious. Also the fact that there are too many inconsistencies with this cart art, that's the reason why it's all the way up at number 4. What's this? Does it have a point? No, it's just an error that nobody took out. Why is all the metal, basket, spokes, handlebars all red? Shit, why don't you use some other colors from the rainbow? It's not like you had to just hit the fill button and say fuck it. It also seems that Paperboy here moonlights as Aquaman with his webbed hands. Too bad he's wearing a hat or I'd check for his gills as well. This is by far one of the most boring cart arts going. Iron Sword, Wizards and Warriors 2. Why is this so high ranking up on the list? Well, I fucking hate Fabio. Remember when he got hit in the face with a seagull? Oh, that was good times. Now back to actual art. Why is he wearing a championship wrestling belt? Those are the cleanest manicured hands I've ever seen for a warrior. The headband is essential to keep your long flowing beautiful hair out of your face when you're in the midst of a battle. The background doesn't make any sense, but that doesn't really matter. It's just more comical than anything, putting someone who people know on the cover of the game pretending to make him something that he's obviously not. This is up so high because of the absolute fakeness of the cover art. They tried so hard and they failed. A nice drawing would have worked a million times better. This is just a small compilation of funny things I found in otherwise fine cart art. This is track and field too. It seems that shooting gymnasts in the head is an Olympic sport. That's pretty sweet. Operation Wolf. It seems that all hostages are sporting white beaters. Why would someone steal hostages from Alabama? Mega Man 3. That's right, Mega Man. Shooting the balls, you sick fuck. Street Fighter 2010. Shit, this is only two years, three months away. I better start saving for my silver suit so I can defend against dragons and purple robots. Finally, Mag Max. More getting shot in the dick. It's like some sort of theme. So let's recap. Dirty pedophile Frenchman. Random monster target clusterfuck. Confused feminist meeting. Absolute shit. Messed up hand pink lovin'. I love Charles in charge. Evil dwarf. Fabio is always a bad thing. It wasn't on purpose, but it's still funny as shit. And now what everyone's been waiting for. It's number one. John Elway's quarterback. At first glance, most of you are saying, what's wrong with this one? It shouldn't even be in the top ten, let alone number one. Well, shut up, stupid. Here's why. Look at it for a second. Just look. Do you see something? I see lots. So, let's begin. First off, look at the shit-faced grin he has. Looks like John Elway just got dropped off at the game by the short bus. Now let's take a closer look at his face. Notice something? That's right, no mouth guard. Yeah, that's a good job there, Johnny. I wonder how many teeth are trampled into the grass because of your shit-faced grin. Notice how he has no chin strap? No safe choice there, Johnny boy. I guess your massive ass crevice in your chin is enough to scare up all onslaughts that you don't need one. Looks like John is forgetting more football-related essentials. Oh, like, shoulder pads? I come to two conclusions why this card art is number one. The first conclusion is just how it was set up. John was told he was getting a game made. He showed up to the photographer on his way to a golf game. He stuck a helmet on his bulbous ass head, threw a controller in his hand, told him to smile, and they were in and out in five minutes. This whole card art just reeks of shoddy and quickly completed, get it in, get it out, effort. The last conclusion is this. How the fuck is he even playing the game? I have no idea how this guy can pass the ball. Look how he's holding the controller. It's like some sort of retarded spider monkey. Hey, aren't you John Elway? No, kid. I'm Brett Favre. Just look how his hands are positioned. Fucker never picked up a video game controller in his entire life and expects us to buy his game? If this game didn't come in a lot that I bought of other games, I would never own it. This card is the epitome of someone trying to make money and branding whatever they can to make money. Elway, you retarded fuck. Well, that wraps up the top 10 worst NES game art of all time. Thanks for watching, and if you don't agree with me, then you can make your own damn video. This is CRX Forum. Take it easy.